Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Big crowd today, so I got a lot of information, a lot of slides. I promise I won't bore you, but there's a lot of information to get through. So I uh, urge anybody that uh, I want to kind of give a, a big general overview of everything. So again, I urge you to come to the booth, talk more in detail about everything. Just run through it very quickly. Okay. Anyway, my name is Rick Dolman. I am a data center infrastructure architect for CX Tech. I want to start out with a little background about Cable Express. Well, I'm sure you guys have seen some, some of the different companies and different groups out there. There are as one, CX Tech, and Cable Express for any cables. Uh, we are a owned by CX Tech. We are the cable partnership of the company. We also work with Heracai for its infrastructure solutions. A little history about Cable Express cables. We're probably the largest infrastructure provider of infrastructure cabling for data centers that are about 5,000 square feet above in the world. A lot of people don't know that. Chase, Verizon, <coughs> Bank of America, things of that sort, very high end. Our kind of forte is our sweet spots come from the large scale data centers. But now that the industry has substantially changed as far as data centers and the AI environment grows, that really kind of thick line between the middle of most data centers used to be separated into kind of high end, mid range, and then networking areas kind of long. Mainframes are shrinking, SAN is exploding, mid range is exploding, network environments exploding. You guys know what Equipment port counts are just skyrocketing these days. So, a lot of companies now are kind of playing in the middle with some of the newer technology. So, it's my goal today to show you how we can um, really kind of predict where this industry is going as far as infrastructure cabling goes, how we can build out how we can future proof ourselves so we don't get into the trouble that a lot of us get into with our infrastructure cable. Okay. So, my main goal today is to show you number one, call savings, manageability, reliability, and some standards. So we're going to assure you that the cabling infrastructure that you put in today is going to last 10 to 15 years. That's our goal. In any networking or data center application, depending on the regardless of the kind of equipment that you're using, you're probably going to do a lot of speed migrations throughout <clears throat> at least four or five in the course of about 10 years. Every three years or so, you're probably going to upgrade your speeds. And it's very important today because the demand for bandwidth is just skyrocketing exponentially. Okay? In four years, we're going to talk a little bit about this later, but in four years, we're going to be needing 40 gig. Okay? And in a good four to five years, we're going to start talking about 100 gig. It's very important our infrastructure is already now to make sure that we're able to provide that in the future. We certainly don't want to rip out the infrastructure that we want to put in today. Now, the great thing about these products is it can be implemented in anything that you have now, so you don't have to rip out or completely rebuild what you're doing. Okay? Totally backwards compatible. So, with that said, what we're going to go through is we're going to show you how we lead the marketplace, okay? how standards are based upon some of the work that we do. The great thing about us is not only do we provide infrastructure cabling to the end user, such as everybody here, we also work with the OEMs and our OEM suppliers. So we're in working with the active technologies to make sure that these links are going to perform in the near future. <clears throat> we're going to show you the latest and greatest products on how to accomplish that. I'm going to show you again how to reduce the overall cost. I'm going to talk about the standards and the design difference, and again, how we future proof ourselves. So, we want to start with the cabling design or the cabling plan. We're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the wrong way of doing it, we're going to talk about the right way of doing it. The first way, what we refer to as point to point or the wrong way, is a very simple infrastructure plan. We have a piece of equipment, we need to connect our active ports. What do we do? We plug it in. Does anybody do that? Okay, we add a new switch, we run a cable, we plug it in, right? What usually happens? Well, you start seeing what happens when you start adding servers and storage until it gets pretty unmanageable very quickly. That's what happens and it gets us into a lot of trouble. I'm sure some of you have saw these pictures, I'm sure some of your data centers might look like this. Anybody's? No, yes, maybe you some of more. Unfortunately, this is the norm and not the exception. So, again, how we get in trouble, not planning. It's essential today that we plan our infrastructure, essential, because things aren't the way they were a few short years ago. This kind of cabling, or this kind of infrastructure build out, especially with fiber optics, okay, where we used to think fiber optics was bulletproof, is not anymore, okay? Pinch points, pressure points, running jumper cables on overhead ladder rack that starts taking the point of the ladder Pinch points and the memory uses and creating loss points, all right, are making our cables now exceed the budgets. 
at least one phone call a week that I get these days, people running one gig and they plug in two gig, they run in two gig, they plug in four gig, and so on. Okay. <coughs> and all of a sudden, the infrastructure's working, they plug these in, all of a sudden, the channel errors all over the place. 100% of the time, it's the cabling and the cabling design in the plane. Okay? Our goal when we design our infrastructure is to lay our infrastructure down and put the four tiles down, never going back underneath the floor or back overhead, depending on if you're running under floor overhead, unless we have to add a major piece of equipment to build into our systems. Now, this is just some more areas. It's a famous orange wall. I'd like to show everybody. We all know what it translates into. Okay? But what we promote is 942 data center standards. Anybody familiar with the standards? So, not to get into too much detail, we can certainly talk in more detail in depth when we have the one on one, but it's basically a standards topology or hierarchy topology on where equipment should be in the data center and how it should be taken. Okay? It's brought into the system that address all the key factors that affect performance and, rely performance and reliability, and it's built out through a system <laughs> of main distribution, okay, through zone distribution, through equipment distribution all brought back to the main distribution area where we interconnect everything. The great thing about this system is, is that we can add at any time to the system any piece of new equipment, bringing it back to our main cross-connect, our main interconnect, or MDA, a lot of people refer to it as CPL, Central Passing Location. But we can bring it in in the passive environment, not having to worry about touching anything that's active, because our number one goal is zero downtime. Any time that we go inside a piece of active equipment to plug, unplug, or to fool around, inside of their try and find cable, we risk a snag, we risk doing something to the cable, we risk downtime. And that's a fact that we'll talk about shortly. But again, so the number one thing that we want to do is manage everything in the past environment. Cable up our active devices, shut the door, don't go back inside. Manage everything in the past environment. General rule of thumb when you're designing infrastructure is that if you're ordering jumpers that are longer than three feet, three to six feet, they're probably going it wrong. Okay, there's a better way to do it. Okay. Anybody want to make 10 foot jumpers? You smile. And this is just broken down a little bit more. Now, the great thing about this solution, and again, if we talk about some size of data centers, a lot of people define data centers different. They can be very large or they can be very small. This particular system, no matter how big it is, no matter how small it is, it works not only in the data center, but connecting your DMARCs from your outside services or your outside buildings. Okay, into your main computer room or data center and then distribute it out to your very <coughs> closets and then out to your desktops. This system is fully functional in that respect. Again, whether it's a thousand square foot or a hundred thousand square foot. If you follow the standards, you can't get yourself in trouble. Okay? It's a, it's a very good best practices type scenario. It talks about cable fill rates and things of this sort. Okay, if we want to make sure that we're able to maintain our impactability, reliability, and our future growth. There's just some pictures on some differences on what we can do to trunk cables versus jumper cables. Yeah. Space savings. Anybody having heat or airflow problems? Concerns? All right, that's a major factor. Again, plan, plan, plan. Okay? Turn your infrastructure into an asset. Okay? Keep it from being an expense. Okay? Start from the get-go. Right? Define the active equipment that we're going to be using. We can map all this out for you and show you how it's exactly there. Then we can put it on the floor plan. We can map it out, <clears throat> show you exactly what's going to go in place, and then of course finish it out by building it out. This is a pretty, this is a pretty good example of, of one of the designs that we've done following the 943 standards. Okay, equipment drawing, equipment rack. These are going to be your various servers. Okay? We have a copper patch, a fiber patch in there. So again, maintaining short jumpers inside of the rack. Okay? Out to the zone cabinet which replicates all these rows here. Okay. Another zone cabinet representing our core switches over there, and all those interconnects are done at that passive point okay. without going back into any piece of active equipment. Keeping our fill rates down, keeping us out of the tray up above and inside the rack. Okay. Any questions? Again, it's a pretty extensive standard. There's tier levels and things of this sort. More than happy to go into any, any, any one individually. We have some summaries of the standards as well, but it's a good practice to follow again from planning from the get go.